Hello everyone, welcome back to the AI Bot Monitor series. Now in the last video, I gave you an overview of the autonomous monitoring system that we're building. So today, we're getting hands on. We're going to install Olama and set up DeepSeek Coder, which is a local AI model specifically trained for programming tasks. Now this is the brain of our monitoring system, and by the end of this video, you'll have a fully functional local AI running on your hardware. This is going to be completely free, no monthly costs or API limits, and we'll test it by having it write some actual code. So if you haven't watched our previous video, I'd recommend starting there to understand what we're building. But if you want to just learn how to run local AI, you can follow along from here. Let's get started. Alright, so what is Olama? So before we install anything, let me explain what Olama is and why we're using it. So Olama is essentially a Docker for AI models. If you've used Docker, you know how it makes running applications very simple. You just pull an image and run a container. Olama does the same thing for the large language models. Now, without Olama, Running a local AI model is very complicated. You need to download model files, install specific versions of Python libraries, configure CUDA or other acceleration, manage memory settings, just know it's a hassle. So with Alama, it's literally install Alama, you run one command to download a model, you run another command to use it, and that's it. Alama handles all the complexity. Now here's why Alama is perfect for our project. First, do I need to say it? It's free and open source. No licenses, no subscriptions, and no usage limits. Second, it's completely private. The AI runs on your hardware. Your code, your errors, your data, none of it ever leaves your computer. Third, it's fast. There's no API calls, no network latency, the AI responds in seconds, and fourth, it has a huge model library. If you want to try a different AI model, just one command, there are models for coding, writing, reasoning, and even more. And fifth, this is important, it's actively developed and supported so the project is backed by serious funding and has a strong community. Now I went over our system requirements in the last video. So I'm running this on Ubuntu 24.04, but Alama works on Windows, Mac, and other Linux distributions. The commands are the same across all platforms. All right, now let's get started. Let's install Alama. Alright guys, so make sure you're booted into your Ubuntu system. If you're doing it exactly how I did where I installed it on an external SSD, just log in. You open the terminal, you can press Ctrl, Alt, and T, or search for a terminal in your applications. The installation is incredibly simple. It's just one command. You can follow along here on the screen, and I'll leave the command on the display here. I'll try my best to pull up all the commands so you can see. Now after doing so, you press enter and you'll probably be asked for your password since this installation needs pseudo privileges to set up the system service. So here you can see the installer is now downloading Olama and also configuring it. It's setting up as a system MD service, which means Olama will start automatically when your computer boots. This should take about a minute. The download is around 60 megabytes. And then you can pause the video and follow along when it's completed. Perfect. You should see a message saying the installation is complete. Now let's verify it worked. You can go ahead and type Olama version. It 
And great, here we see the version number here. Now let's check the service and see if it is running. Now you can just type system CTL status Olama. You should see active or running in green text. This means Alama is up and ready, so you can press Q to quit the view. Alama is now installed and running on your system. Alright, so now that we're finished with installing Alama, we need to download DeepSeek Coder. So, to download our AI model, we're using Deep C Coder because it's specifically trained for programming tasks. Now let me explain the model sizes real quick. Deep C Coder comes in different sizes. 1.3 billion parameters, 6.7 billion, and 33 billion parameters. The bigger the model, the smarter it is. But it also needs more RAM and runs slower. The 1.3 billion version is fast but it struggles with complex problems. The 33 billion version is really smart, but needs 32 plus gigabytes of RAM. So we're using the 6.7 billion version. It's the sweet spot, so it's smart enough for most coding tasks, but runs on 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM. So now to download it, type Olama Pull Deep Seek Coder 6.7b instruct. You can just follow with the tags here on screen and wait for it to download. So let me explain this command here. A llama pull is like a docker pull. It downloads a model. Deep sea coder is the model name by the way. And 6.7 billion in our text here. 6.7b dash instruct specifies that we want the 6.7 billion parameter version that's been instruction tuned. You press enter and this is going to download about 4 gigabytes so it'll take a few minutes depending on your internet speed. I'll just speed through this part and go ahead. Alright, so the download is complete. The model is now stored locally on your system. Now for the fun part. Let's actually use it. To interact with the model, we type Olama run deep sea coder colon 6.7b dash instruct. This starts an interactive chat session with the AI, and you should see a prompt waiting for your input. So let's test it with a simple coding task. I'm going to ask it to write a Python script that prints numbers 1 through 10. So while it's spooling, that's telling you that the AI is thinking and it's also generating code. So here we see, here is a simple Python script that does exactly what you asked for. And it also, it gives you the script and explains what the script actually does. Now let's try write a Python function that checks if a number is prime.
Oh, look at this. It wrote a complete function with proper logic. And it also included a doc string explaining what it does and it even added comments. The code looks correct too. We're not going to be trying this right now. We're just testing out to make sure that Olama works. So let's also test it with something more specific to our case. I'm going to type, I have a Node.js Discord bot that's throwing, mm, let's say, cannot read property username of undefined. What's the likely cause and how do I fix it? Let's try that one and see if it will be able to give us a answer. So now the AI is analyzing and then it will provide us with a response. So it correctly identified that this is a null pointer issue. It also explained that this happens when a user object isn't found or has been deleted, and it seems to be providing a fix and a null check before accessing the username property. Now this is exactly the kind of analysis we need for our monitoring system. Let me try one more. I'm going to ask it to Let's have it debug a code. Now this is going to be like an async function to get data and return response.json. Let's see how it goes about this issue as well. Wow, it immediately spotted the issue, missing a wait keyword before fetch, and explained that without a wait, the function returns a promise instead of the actual response, which causes the .json call to also fail. And it also provided me with the corrected code. Now this is impressive for a model running entirely on local hardware, without any form of internet connection. To exit the interactive session, just type forward slash buy. Alright, so we see that it works. We're going to try using Olama via API. So the interactive chat is cool for testing, but for our monitoring system, we need to use Olama programmatically, which is going to be from Python scripts. So Olama runs a REST API on localhost port 11434. This means any programming language can talk to it using HTTP request. So let me show you how to use this from Python. I'm going to create a quick script. And first, let's install the Python request library if you don't have it. And now I'll create a simple Python script. You can open your text editor, I'll be using Nano, and you can use whatever you prefer. So this is the code I'll be typing, I'll be showing it here on screen, and you can go ahead, I will be adding this to the GitHub, you can go there and copy the files if you need it.
So if you use Nano like me, you save and exit with Control X and then Y and then you press enter. And now we can test it. So it's Python 3 test underscore olama.py. That's the name of the file that we used. It took about maybe two or almost three minutes for it to provide a response. But would you look at that though? The AI analyzed the error and provided a fix, all from a Python script. Now this is exactly how our monitoring system will work. It will send error logs to a llama and get back suggested fixes. Let me explain what's actually happening when we use this model. So DeepSeek Coder is a large language model trained on billions of lines of code from GitHub. Documentation and programming discussions, it understands multiple program languages, common patterns, and typical bugs. The 6.7 billion parameter version we're using is quantized, so it's compressed using a technique that reduces file size and memory usage while keeping most of the model's intelligence intact. So when we send it a prompt, here's what happens. The text is tokenized into chunks, and the model processes each token through the neural network layers. It then goes ahead and generates a probability distribution for what token should come next, and it samples from that distribution to pick the next word. And it repeats this process until it generates a complete response. This all happens locally on your CPU or GPU if you have a beefed up PC. No data leaves your computer. That's why it's private and why there's no recurring cost. Now this model is not perfect. It's not as smart as GPT-4 or Claude. It will make mistakes. It might suggest fixes that don't work. And that's why our monitoring system has a three tier approach and an automatic rollback. But for common issues such as syntax errors, missing imports, null checks, or simple logic bugs, it's really good. And that covers the majority of bot errors that we'll encounter. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, drop a comment if you tried this and let me know which model you're using or if you ran into any issues. All the commands and code from this video will be in the description and on GitHub. So next up, building the monitoring system in Python. And that's where we bring everything together. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.